high. I haven't listened to too much of it, but it seems like the majority is otherwise. I think that the oral atmosphere developing in this particular hearing that the committee's on trial and make darn sure we don't do nothing ought to transmit rather back to the original problem. Filth, pornography, suicide, all this other stuff coming out of these records. Now, the other gentleman, Zappa, said, print the words, I rather like that. Uh, since I wouldn't have to read it. He would read it one way, obviously, and I would read it differently. And there's that human error involved. Do you have any recommendation for the committee other than just do nothing? I mean, you've talked in beautiful terms. You're the best I've seen <laughs> on peace and the family. I'm not speaking facetiously. And the family and the responsibility and the wonderful human nature. And I'm with you on the stars. We're both supporters of Cousteau and... Uh, I've authored in this particular committee the oceanography programs. Barring all of that, are you saying do nothing? No, sir, I'm not saying do nothing, and that is exactly why I'm here and why I applaud this hearing yes. and applaud what these ladies, uh, what the PMRC has presented to us. Well, I think uh, we've got to be sensible about it, but there is, like you say, with it, particularly with at least the radio and TV, I can't read the words coming there. I can see that difference between Mr. Zappa and myself. If persons of free volition can go in and read the language and see the words there, uh, I wouldn't have to read it. But then, to not have some inhibition, some kind of discipline as you describe it within the broadcast media, uh, then we've flunked the course because there are six hours of that thing steaming and beaming into uh, the homes. Well, you know, Senator, uh, excuse me if I'm interrupting. Uh, no, sir, not. I'm trying to... When I was, uh, when I was raised, uh, television was just coming out, and golly, it was an attractive uh, uh, medium, and I could sit there in front of that TV set and watch it all day. I, my parents had some restrictions on how much time I could watch television during the week, especially when I was going to school. And I could choose the programs that I wanted to watch. And I think that this is kind of an influence that we can exercise as parents on our children. Just because it's on seven hours doesn't mean our kids are going to get to sit there and watch it that whole time. And we can give them a certain amount of time. And over here for me, you know, one of the things that I'm fortunate with is my children and I live in a, a beautiful country. And we have a lot of, of activities which really call us outdoors, uh, call us together and away from the boob tube. No, I don't watch very much television. And, uh, and I think that we can exercise this kind of influence on our children, even in a city environment. You and I are different. I mean, uh, you and I are the same. We don't watch. I don't watch that much television, obviously. but. Uh, the, the record is otherwise. They're watching television as much as instruction in the classroom, in the public schools, and more. All surveys show that, so it's, it's being watched. So that's the fact. And living in the real world, where you and I would like to restrict our children, or me, my grandchildren now, uh, it's, it's a real problem. It's a real problem, and I guess you know from uh, being a master at the art, the way you start off selling that record is get it accepted at some good programming, some good broadcasting, and then, then the sales follow. And uh, you can't print those words ahead of time, so I'll know to cut the television off quick or whatever it is. Uh, unless that discipline develops, in other words, with the broadcast media, we are going to be forced somewhere with regulation through the FCC or otherwise. I don't think the American public... Uh, is uh, going to go along just with a nice hearing up in Washington today. I think there's <laughs> going to have to be something more developed of some kind of discipline, as you indicate, and I'm trying to find out, find out from you how do you develop that discipline a little bit better than what has been developed. Well, I think that, that you know, a good beginning to addressing this real problem is, the is this hearing that is taking place. What most concerns me, aside from potential legislation which might be enacted, which we have said is, which we've heard today is not going to be the case, is that the whole presentation made by the PMRC comes from, in my experience, a foundation of fear. The only thing we have to fear, as President Roosevelt said, is fear itself. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of what my children might see. I'm not afraid of anything that might be shown, shown them or done in their presence that would lessen my influence on them or their opportunity to grow up and be fine, upstanding adults and perhaps someday serve in this uh, very august body. Well, most respectfully, President Roosevelt never heard these records. <laughs> I think the things that he heard were far worse, sir. Thank you very much, uh, 
Mr. Chairman. Uh, it's an honor to be able to ask uh, some questions. I've been a fan for a long time, Mr. Denver, and not only of your music, but also of, uh, of your uh, contributions to efforts like Farm Aid at the present time, and also uh, uh, world peace and uh, your trips to the Soviet Union and elsewhere. Do you see the kind of trend in, uh, in uh, some rock music that is outlined by this presentation? Have you ever have been to a, a Motley Crue uh, concert, for example? No, sir. Are you, do you agree that there does seem to be a growing trend uh, in the, uh, at least in the uh, heavy metal area, uh, that uh, emphasizes uh, 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 explicit uh, violence and sex and uh, sadomasochism and the rest. You, you're aware of that music, aren't you? Yes. Why do you think that has been growing in popularity? Again, sir, uh, my experience, not only in this country, but all over the world, is that music today is the medium which most specifically tells us what's going on in young people's minds. Not what's being put into them, but what yeah. reflects what they're interested in. I think that this addresses itself to a much graver problem, in fact, the source of the symptom that we're discussing here today. Well, I mean, if a 10-year-old uh, uh, listens to uh, a song uh, glorifying a rape, that's not uh, reflecting what is in that 10-year-old's uh, mind, is it? Uh, I don't think so. I'm not sure that there are many 10-year-olds who know what rape is. Well, uh, I'm not sure that I'm not sure I would agree with that. If if um, if you have uh, an explicit description of uh, of a suicide, for example, uh, and a song uh, that that uh, seems to glorify and promote suicide, uh, that's not. I mean, I mean, young people are aware you know, of that. <laughs> Mr. Gore, uh, Senator, excuse me for interrupting. Sure. If I could count the number of times that a mother or father has come up to me or a child has come up to me and says, if I don't get your autograph, my mother's going to kill me. If I don't get your autograph, my daughter is going to kill me. Yeah. You know, uh, just well, you see a this is a part of our, of, of our language. And, yeah. and there might be a slight difference, but I don't think it's as big as you point out. You well, know, the if, way uh, this, this video that we watched here today uh, I think is probably a fantasy that every child, that every kid has about his father at some point in time. It may not be exactly those particular graphics. It may be out in the farm taking, being able to take your dad out and put, a, put a, uh, a board to his fanny. But this goes on. This is a part of growing up. And our, com our society has gotten increasingly complex. There are many more images to reach from. They all have an impact on a child's mind. And I'm saying that the small percentage of records that we're discussing here today, compared to the 125,000 songs that are released every year, is minuscule and is not going to affect our children uh, to a degree that we need to be fearful of. We need to be conscious of it. We must concern ourselves. And we need to uh, communicate with our children and have them feel comfortable with com uh, communicating with us. Well, let me come back to the question about suicide. Let's say you have a, a popular rock star who is uh, uh, who has a lot of fans, who sings a song that says suicide is uh, the solution and appears in fan magazines with a, with a, a gun barrel uh, pointed in his mouth and, uh, and, and promotes material that, that seems to uh, glorify suicide. Here we have one of the highest rates of teen suicide of any country in the world. The rate has gone up 300% in the last decade among young people, while it's remained constant among adults. Do you think it's a, a responsible uh, act for, uh, for uh, a, a record company to put out a, a song glorifying suicide and for the artist to uh, uh, promote uh, the album by uh, putting a gun uh, in his mouth uh, uh, in, in a suicidal, uh, in a simulation of suicide? I would not like to be the one to tell a record company or an artist what to do. I certainly think the picture that you describe is deplorable. And uh, if I found that in my home, I would uh, talk to my kids about it and uh, get rid of it. Could I uh, just interrupt? 
My understanding that you have to leave, is that correct? Are you going to... Senator, I appreciate that. Yes, I have an appointment with NASA at noon, and uh, if it's possible, I would like to go to that, but I also really appreciate being able to discuss this with you all, and I'm happy to stay if I can handle that. Let me ask uh, <laughs> if there are any, are there any more questions? Mr. Chairman, I will, uh, I will stop uh, my questions at this point and wish uh, Mr. Denver good luck in getting on the space shuttle. Thanks very much. I appreciate that. Senator Axon uh, has uh, a question, and I think Senator Pressler does. Mr. Chairman, thank you very much for being here. I yes, sir. appreciate your testimony. I don't know you, but uh, uh, although maybe to the beginning of the end of your career, I like your music. Uh, <laughs> uh, in fact, I think I know you. Uh, uh, I think a friend of yours, Rainbow Terrain, has uh, talked about you. She's an art instructor and a friend of my wife's, and uh, I kind of think I know her through you. Just one basic question. Please clarify for us, what is your opinion to the key question that's been asked time and time again here, and you've been, you've alluded to it, uh, are you for uh, the printing of material on labels, are you for, or for or against, or are you for or against any kind of a rating as long as it's done voluntarily between the uh, record companies and the producers. Uh, uh, that's my key question, and I would simply say one more time, which I said every time I've had this microphone this morning, I think it's wrong to imply that uh, no, although no bills have introduced, bills might not be introduced, and I want to hold uh, that threat for what it's worth over the head of trying to accomplish some free enterprise volunteerism that most people have agreed to. What, what do you think about a free enterprise volunteerism getting together and either printing or coming up with a rating program of some kind that would be formally displayed on records? I'm opposed as an artist. I'm opposed to any kind of a rating system, voluntary or otherwise. Putting the lyrics on the, on the sleeve of an album or on the jacket of an album is, is no problem for me. Again, I think it goes beyond reading the word, and I bring up again the song Rocky Mountain High. You know, some people, high is high, and high is getting stoned, and high is a feeling of elation, a celebration in life. As I told the people in the Soviet Union, when I had the privilege of singing for them there, I, descri I sang Rocky Mountain High, and then I described what high meant to me, and then I said to them, that's how I feel having the privilege of singing for you. That is how I feel having the opportunity to participate in my government here today. Thank you, Mr. Denver. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Senator Pressler. I guess that ties in with, uh, with uh, my question. Your basic line is that you're against any type of government action in this area or, indeed, any voluntary labeling. I, I would be, yes. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you for your patience for uh, waiting so long. Thank you, Senator. Great privilege to be with you all. Thank you.